My name is Brian and welcome to WrenchFest Garage. Today we're going to be working on the ultimate bent side Ford Cummins. So we got a lot going on in the shop today. We are building the ZF6 here in the shop. We got a set of trailer wraps over there that we're putting together. And then we're going to go ahead and pull the motor out of this truck. So it's a little chaotic here in the garage, but we're going to get her done anyway. So sit back and enjoy. The reason that we're pulling out the engine, this 12 valve engine out of this truck, this is a perfectly good running truck. It drives, it stops. I mean, it's far from being road worthy, but it does run, it does move. But anyway, the reason we're pulling it out because we're getting it ready for the new frame, which is bigger and better. It's an F450 frame. Um, I go into it a lot more depth in other videos. If you watch some of my other videos, it explains it better. So anyway, we're gonna pull this motor out and uh, hopefully it goes good. We'll see how she goes. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and pull this hood off. It weighs about 4,000 pounds, but I'll get a little help. We'll get her off and make more room so we can get the cherry picker in there and make it easier to get the motor out. Dad, I don't know about this. What do you want me to do? Stand around all day and talk about it. So the next thing we're gonna do here is just unhook the batteries. It's just always a good idea. And we're probably just gonna remove these batteries because where they bolt to, that's all gonna come out as well. So we'll just pull them out. Gosh, big gay lighter. Yeah. <clears throat> so now we gotta go ahead and drain the antifreeze and get this radiator up out of the way so I don't destroy it like I did on the other truck and then we'll keep moving forward. So we're gonna use the old Ziploc baggie track. We're gonna try to keep everything somewhat organized, because like I said, I got three different projects going. It's pretty hard to stay organized, but we're gonna do our best. Oh, what was that? Okay, wow. Did a great job making a mess. It's kind of my MO though. What does MO stand for? Mode of operation. At least that's what I'm gonna say it stands for. Did you come up with that yourself? Yeah, that was just hell's on me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Google it, google -fy it. Use the Google machine. How old are you? Well. 80? My personality <laughs> suggests I'm about 8, maybe 12 on a good day. Uh, I'll think you're more like, like 80, my, <laughs> the way you act. My body suggests that I'm much, much older. <laughs> All right, we got that draining. Made a mess on the floor every time. So we're going to go ahead and pull the radiator support out and the radiator. It'll give us a ton more room and just make life a lot easier. What antifreeze does that take? I don't know. Seven. I don't know. So I built these custom battery holders. So I could do dual batteries in it, and they, I basically, I've got them, I've got them hooked to the fender and the front radiator support, so they got to come out. And I bolted the crap out of them. So I just had a thought. Um, do you, do you guys call this an engine or a motor? What's the proper term? So for me, uh, that's an engine. An internal combustion engine, piston driven engine. A motor is like an electric motor, something you'd find on like your furnace or something, you know, a hair dryer that would have an electric motor. Anyway, let me know in the comments. What's your opinion on it? I didn't realize. That's many bolts. 
So this is my custom battery mount. It's just made out of angle iron, a little strap, then some uh, all thread. That's what holds the battery down. I just got another piece of angle goes over like that. It's pretty crude, but it, it works. And I've set this up to run the commercial batteries. They're just, they work good and they're super easy to get. And they're usually not that expensive. You can usually get a pretty good deal on them. So I'm running dual commercial batteries on this. So it should start, I hope. It's gonna sound like somebody's peeing in the background the whole time. Or you got an awesome fountain. Ooh. Okay, what else we got holding this beast on? It just keeps going and going. You dirty rotten. Ah, oh, those are both messed up. I wonder if we can leave that on. How many more bolts? Seven. Seven more bolts. I think we might be close. So I'm gonna have to undo these bolts up here. Hopefully I can just pull the fender out just enough to get the radiator support past it. It's a lot of bolts. Jeez, the whole truck just come apart there. I thought your light was gonna fall on the floor there. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. How about this? It kind of feels like it's still bolted to something, perhaps everything. One more there, and one more there. One more, one more, one more. Okay, I still feel like there's like 40 more bolts holding this on, but I'm not seeing them. Something's holding it. I don't know what it is. We're gonna go ahead and pull the radiator hoses off now. Start getting that ready. Still draining antifreeze. We got about, what, three, three and a half gallons out so far. <laughs> if I overflow, man, ow. So currently this truck has the 79 radiator in it. I think it's for a 400 cubic inch motor. Uh, fits really good in the radiator support. Don't know if it's enough to cool the Cummins, so eventually we're probably gonna go ahead and put the Super Duty radiator in this. But uh, depending on funds and whatnot, we might run this radiator for a little while after we get it going, and then we can decide. Uh, I guess we can start doing the underneath stupid stuff while this is draining, which I really don't wanna do. But here we go. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dive under the truck and start undoing the torque converter bolts and the bell housing bolts and get ready to kind of separate the transmission from the engine. I think we finally got it. <laughs> Come here, gun. Yay, we did something. Even if it is wrong, we still did something. is the bracket for the shift linkage. It's still totally in my way. There you go. Okay. Now it's happening. I'm gonna tip to pull the starter out. I'm gonna get on there. There you go. That floor is so close to that transmission. Didn't realize it. All right, evidently we got more than two bolts holding that starter on. What size is that bolt? 
I don't know. I see, said the blind man. That's one of those star-headed bolt things. Yeah, this transmission's not gonna be fun to pull. Where's the motor? It's very tight, a spot or two. So right now we're gonna pull the torque converter bolts off of the flex plate. Um, I don't know if I explained this, but this is an automatic truck right now. I'm pretty sure you haven't explained that. Why is it automatic? That's what I, that's what I bought. Okay, so the donor truck is, one of the donor trucks, I should say, was uh, like an 89 or 90 first gen. Um, obviously the Cummins had the three speed Torque Flight 727 automatic transmission. And that's currently what we're detaching from the motor because we are not going to use this. When I put this motor and trans and transfer case, I pulled it out of the truck in one piece and I put it all in this truck in one piece. So I personally have never had this transmission off this motor. So did you have the intention of having this be an automatic truck? Yeah, I mean, I was just gonna deal with it till I found something better, which I basically been looking for uh, the right manual transmission for quite a while. I mean, they're out there, they're just expensive. People know what they, they got, they know what they want for them. So, and I am just, you know, too cheap to pony up the dough till I found this ZF6 that's going in it. Okay, so I'm just cranking this engine over on the flywheel with the pry bar. There is nicer barring tools that fits in a hole on the back of the bell housing. But I'm down here, so I'm just gonna do it this method. It's working out all right. Maybe not the fastest, but we'll get her done. <clears throat> The antifreeze is kind of cut dripping. Oh, I forgot about that. Can only lay on the ground for so long. Old. Old. This little bowl of mine. I'm gonna pull it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's probably like 30,000 of these bolts in here. Wow, that is like zero clearance up in there. All right, we got three of these damn things out. How many is there? Hopefully just four. Welcome to my world. One where nothing goes right or fast. Hey, we should do musicals. Okay, I gotta get out from under here for a minute. Okay, so I'm just pulling the radiator bolts out and kind of letting this finish draining because it'll drain for days and days and get it all over my floor. But I got one more bolt, so hopefully I don't drop this. I'm gonna try to hold it and pull it all at the same time. And probably drop everything in the process. Oh yeah. Drain on the floor. I'm gonna find a safe home for that for a minute. Trying to get, keep it tilted back a little bit so it don't drain out on the floor. Too bad. Okay, that's where that's going. <laughs> that bucket is like quite nearly full. Are you gonna keep that and reuse it? I'm gonna try. Probably uh, when I go put it back in, I'll probably strain it out. There's gonna be a little bit of dirt and stuff in there. Wow. So, any of you ever watch these videos and wonder why I never had the hood completely shut? It's because of this cable right here. I routed it right where the spring goes for the hood. So, yeah, that was my bad. <laughs> that, was, that was an oversight on my part right there. But we'll... We'll figure it out. It's all part of the experience. I don't know why anyone would watch you after hearing that. <laughs> okay, I think we're finally going to 
and have this stupid thing off. Let's see what else we got hooked up that I forgot. Okay, don't know where to put this. Maybe you should think about where you're gonna put stuff before you take it off. And it's Why in would... your hands and you're like, Argh! Why would I do that? Why? Think ahead? <laughs> Who does that? I'm gonna bolt these fenders kind of back on so they don't get destroyed in the rest of this process because they're just kind of dangling here. Ta-da! Let's go home. Took you two hours to get to this point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what size that bolt is, but that bolt's starting to piss me off. Come on, there we go. All right, so we're still just uh, undoing bolts for the flex plate or bolts to the torque converter. I think we got one left. There it is. Somebody put some Loctite on that. I spilled an antifreeze all over my tools. Okay, success. That's done, and now we just gotta figure out the 15. Okay, there's not really 15, but the bolts for the transmission that bolts it to the motor. Let's get those undone. All right, so I stepped out. I grabbed a longer extension. I'm hoping I can reach up in here and grab these housing bolts. Right, let's see how this goes. Looks promising. Until it comes out and smacks me in the head. Woo. Are you really a mechanic until you've been working under something and you drop a tool and it smacks you in the face? That's always a good time. Especially when it hits you in the teeth. I shouldn't say that because now it's going to happen. <laughs> but here we go. Ooh, that went exactly how I figured it would go. But I haven't been hitting the tooth yet. So. Yay! We did something. <laughs> no, just my forehead. It's a, good, it's a good thing it hit me in the head because if it hit me somewhere else, it might have hurt me. All you got to do is have a 40 foot extension. Half inch drive gun and no common sense. You'd be able to get her out. Okay, I'm gonna need one more extension. This is getting stupid. Okay, watch out. This might get ugly. Oh crap, I think I got it. Those were the easy ones. <laughs> Jeff, there you go. We're on it, my gun just ain't got enough. Oomphah. Evidently Chrysler thought it was a great idea to run like 15 different cooler hoses. So we gotta undo all those. Actually, we just gotta undo those two up there. Power steering, fuel lines. And I think we're gonna be heading out. It could happen. All right, so now we're gonna pull off the air cleaner assembly so we can get to these transmission cooler lines that are on this side of the motor. Ta-da, it's off. I'm gonna stick a glove over this turbo so hopefully nothing gets in it. So this inner fender's kinda in my way, so I'm gonna try to pull it out. If it's gonna be a fight, I'm just gonna leave it in and work around it, but it looks like there's like maybe four bolts left to pull it out, so we'll see how rusty the bolts are. A little rusty. Any of you Ford guys out there can tell me if this is factory or not. There's like a rubber piece that goes from the cab over to the inner fender. Yeah, let me know in the comments. Is that factory or is that somebody's crazy idea? Okay, guess that's gonna come out. Yeehaw. that's worth it but that's gonna make it a lot easier to get in there so now I'm unhooking the cooler lines 
Chrysler had this great idea to run the coolant through this cooler up here and then run the transmission fluid through it, which I guess it worked. And then they also ran it through the radiator cooler. So there's like four different transmission cooler lines for this. So we'll unhook them. Yay, it's kind of loose. Now we're dripping like crazy. Okay, that's good. It's getting in the pan. Now we gotta undo the motor mount bolts. We'll get those out of the way. That's a little tighter. There we go. Twelve hours later. Okay, it's out. I'm just uh, gonna put this jack under here with a block, kind of hold the tranny up so the nose of the transmission doesn't fall down. I think I got everything unhooked, so we're gonna drag the cherry picker over there and go to tugging on it and see what we forgot. Cummins has these super nice spots to lift the engine, brackets, whatever you want to call them. They should all have those brackets. That'd be pretty sweet. This is the part where you start thinking, wondering, am I doing this right? Did I unhook everything that I'm supposed to unhook? And at this point, there's only one way to find out. Tug on a little bit, see what happens. Anymore. I know. So I got a pry bar in there in between the motor mounts and the frame trying to get this to pop loose just a little bit better. Trying to get a little bit of freedom here. Alright, so I'm probably going to have to crawl underneath and make sure that the transmission and the uh, engine is separating. Oh yeah, it's separating. Would you look at that? It's all right, so if you look back there, you can see the separating. This is the engine, this is the transmission, and there's about three quarters of an inch gap there. So that's what we want to see. I'll crawl under there and just double check, make sure the torque converter is staying with the transmission and not hanging up on the motor. All right, so the torque converter looks good. It looks like it's staying with the transmission. Everything looks like it's coming out. The only thing I think that's kind of holding me up, hanging me up, is that back valve cover. I've got it super close to the engine and I gotta get it up high enough to get over the motor mount bolts or studs. They're actually studs in this. So there's not a lot of give in there. So I gotta get it up. Maybe what I need to do is just unhook it from the motor itself. I might do that to give me just a little bit more room and then I think it'll come out without smashing that back valve cover. So this is a stud on the motor mount and there's actually one on the bottom that goes through so it has stud going down stud going up so we got to get the motor up over those studs which isn't happening and if we look right back here so this is the clearance i have for the valve cover i think i mean i can i'm not hitting it yet but i can get my finger in there but uh i don't know i think i might pull on a little bit more before i try to undo the motor mounts right off the block let's see how it goes yeah, these motor mounts kind of suck. Oh, something happened. I don't know if it's good. Dang. It's definitely coming forward. It's kind of up above that spot on the cab I was worried about. It wants to come forward. This side doesn't want to move. This side is what's hanging us. So this motor mount's really hanging us up. It's not budging at all. So we gotta figure this out. I wish this other side was the side that was holding us up because I can actually get into that side. This side's got fender in the way still. There's me. Oh, really at all. Is that stupid starter holding us up? 
So I think I figured out what the major hang up is here. I decided not to pull the starter off because I thought it could stay with the motor and the adapter, but I think it might be hanging me up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pulling it off. Just one more bolt, so we'll give that a try. Driving the struggle bus right here. Come on. All right, if that ain't the last starter bolt, I'm gonna flip out. And it might be jammed in there. It may never come out. Ooh. <laughs> that scared me. Scared me too. One more starter bolt, and it's just a bitch to get to. Okay. Don't drop this on my head. That'd be good. Starter. Starter was a lot of drama. Didn't need to be that much. Ow, I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> oh my that hurt. Alright, now it's time to get me the evil on this thing. Alright, so we got the starter out, so now we're gonna pull on it again and see if we can get it up past those motor mounts. This time, without too much more drama. It's like wedged in there. I think it's coming though. I just gotta find my pry lever. Holy sh I mean, holy moly. That's what I meant to say. Okay, like we should, if we can get off this one stupid motor now, we should be out. We just don't want to get off. Okay, getting closer. Easy, big fella. Still hung up on something. It looks like cooler lines. We got some cooler line or a cooler line bracket. Like I said earlier, there's like four lines for the transmission I got going. Run it through the radiator, run it through a cooler on the side of the engine, and I forgot one of the brackets under here. Hopefully that's it. Let's find out. All right, I think we're swinging free now. Oh, right. Pull this ground off. <laughs> I wonder, wonder if I could forget anything else while I'm doing this. That should be it. I think I got everything. I'm gonna try it one last time. This better be it. Flip out if it's not. Actually, I'll consider it. It's not going bad. Cross member. I have to flatten the tires. I'm close. Okay. Heavy, heavy, heavy motor. Okay. All right. I'm gonna very hopefully gently set this down. This is a little sketch. Still leaking transmission fluid from that stupid cooler on the back. There it is, in all her glory, all her 12 valve glory. Okay, now I just gotta find a home for this and, until I get the transmission put together and we can start putting this together and putting it on the frame. So, one more step closer. Should have measured how my tire it's sitting now that it was before. <laughs> well, it's a thousand pounds lighter. Yep. Pounds plus yeah, it lighter. moved a lot. So I'm just pulling off this cooler. Um, this is the cooler. So Cummins on the early ones, maybe the later ones, I don't know, but they basically ran coolant through this cooler and also transmission fluid to cool the transmission. It was two coolers, one of the radiator, and then this gem right here. I'm gonna pull it off because we're doing a manual transmission and this thing is just leaking all over. So I'm gonna get rid of it. So just kind of looking this truck over, I realized all the work that I have into this just to get it to this point. So for instance, this is the Dodge steering gear. I had to make a custom mount for drill holes, all that fun stuff. The steering's all custom, double D shafts, whatever, all that fun stuff. I had to do the 
automatic transmission linkage that's all new throttle cable had to mount that up had to mount a accelerator pedal uh, this crossover steering had to build because this is the Dodge front end, Dana 60 Kingpin. And that's just kind of a drop in the bucket of what I've, the work that I've got into this thing. So yeah, it's a little nuts that uh, we're just going to swap frames. But the reason that I guess that we're swapping frames, I said a hundred times, it's just a bigger, better frame. I had no plans of doing that, but I was looking for a manual transmission because I did not want to run this three speed. It's just not going to do what I need it to do. So I started looking for a six speed transmission, found that ZF6 that came with the whole truck, got looking at the truck and thinking, okay, this has got better brakes. It has hydro boost brakes and not vacuum assisted brakes, which are a ton better. These first gen Dodges, the brakes are mediocre at best. Please forgive me, first gen guys. I love first gen Dodges, don't get me wrong, but the brakes could be improved. Anyway, they're just a whole list of reasons and stuff, and it's a little it's a little weird to be looking at all the work I've put into this that I'm basically just gonna get rid of and toss. But that's the way she goes. Bigger, better, keep moving forward. This cherry picker doesn't steer. Well. I feel like I'm gonna take the wall out. You'd be very disappointed. Are you sure that fits through there? Well, didn't you get the cherry picker through there before and it's not wider than the cherry picker? You did. Just no keep, keep, keep coming. Okay, you need to go just this way a little bit. Well, it's gonna hit the tire. I can see that from here. Well, it's gonna hit the wall. You got a little bit more room toward the tire. Can you, since you're over there, turn the steering wheel this Okay, passenger. <laughs> this is a lot. Am I anywhere near where you want me? Yeah, not enough. Now, now you're just right in the tire. You got room towards the wall. You just pushed yourself right back into the tire. Okay. I knew it would work. Balance is pretty good on the order. Okay, I guess. I guess that's good. Okay, through a series of bad decisions, we got the engine out. It was a little bit of a struggle, a little bit of a fight, a few things hung us up, but nothing big deal. Just typical engine removal stuff. So we got her. Time to move on to the next step, which is I want to maybe put a rear main in that engine. Well, I've got it out and easy access to it. And then also there's a frost plug on the back of that cylinder head. I may address that as well. So the next step though, I got to get that transmission done and put together. Then we can put everything together, put it in the F450 frame, and then we can move on putting the cab on it and stuff like that. So appreciate you guys watching. Like, comment, subscribe.